Tips for driving in Italy part two. Via. Ciao a tutti, benvenuti sul mio canale. Hi everyone, I'm David, welcome to my channel. And on this channel, I give practical tips for everything Italy. If you haven't already, check out my previous video where I give other practical tips about driving in this country. So this video really has a double purpose. The first one, and most importantly, is to continue to give you good practical information about driving in this country should you happen to be behind the wheel. The other one really is for me to kind of uh, rant a little bit because I have had some frustrations driving here and it's just very good to talk about them. Now, just to be transparent, uh, I do realize that, you know, you can encounter driving problems uh, in any big city and in many places throughout the world. I'm sure everybody has their own nightmare stories from, from wherever. However, the purpose of this video is to present to you uh, Italian driving. And the bulk of my experience is, is mainly here in Rome, but also in Sicily, because we do, go, we do go down there frequently and I do drive there. All right, let's get into my tips and also my rant. Uh, these are actually in no particular order. This first one is something that I've seen here in Rome, and it's very frustrating. When you're at a traffic light and you have to make a left-hand turn, sometimes you don't get an arrow, so you have to wait your turn. But not only that, sometimes when you are going straight and the person opposite you is, uh, is turning left, what they'll do sometimes is they will slowly jut out into the middle of the road. And when that, when that happens, you know, you have to uh, move accordingly to not hit that person. But what can happen is that, you know, when you uh, move to avoid hitting that person, you know, you do infringe upon the lane of the person uh, who's on the right of you. This next one is an Italian classic, which happens all over Italy, I'm sure, and that is double parking. Anyone who's ever visited Italy and has a minimal knowledge of the country knows that everything here is much smaller, everything's more compact, and so parking can be scarce. So what happens frequently? Well, you'll get somebody who needs to pop into a shop just for a moment, and what they'll do is double park, and they do it in a way where they're taking up uh, either partially, halfway, or even uh, all of a lane of traffic. So when you're driving, you gotta stay sharp, you gotta watch out for that, and you have to make sure that you move out of the way so as to not rear end the, the parked car. Unfortunately, what happens is uh, the person who's blocked in, what they'll frequently do is they'll keep honking the horn until the other person comes and moves their car. So that creates just a lot of noise. I mean, I get why they do it, but you know, if, you, if you're trying to take a nap or if you want some peace and quiet, driving for me here is really like a game of chess. Because if you think about it, you really have to plan your move ahead and you have to anticipate the move of the other person. Let's take the parked car example from before. Suppose that you are driving in the lane which is not obstructed. Well, if the, if the person um, on the right side of you has to suddenly merge into your lane to uh, avoid the parked car, this is something that you really have to see ahead of time. You have to look at the parked car and you have to kind of anticipate that this person is going to maybe suddenly move into your lane to not rear end the parked car. So you really gotta anticipate the move. Oh, here's another adorable aspect about driving here that, that gets my nerves uh, in regards to parking. Very often, you'll get, uh, if you're behind somebody who is looking for a parking spot, they'll just drive very slowly, you know. And they do that because as soon as they see a parking spot, you gotta grab it immediately. What I wish they would do is put their blinker on, so this indicates to me that, you know, they're not part of, of the normal traffic and they're looking for a parking spot. This way, I can pass them if necessary. This also applies to somebody who's lost and is trying to find a certain uh, house, address, whatever. You know, they'll be driving, they'll be creeping along and they'll be looking to see if that's the address. No, that's not it, no. But put the blinker on. If you do that, then, then I know that you're lost and, you know, I can pass you. Like they say in Campania, Nieta Fred. The next one pertains to pedestrian crossings or the, um, the crosswalks. These make me nervous, really. Uh, when I'm driving you know, and I see a crosswalk, I'm always looking around to see if somebody wants to cross the road because there are certain people that play chicken with cars. And that's another thing. If you are a pedestrian in an Italian city and you see a crosswalk, what I would do is, even though you have the right of way, I would wait until you have a very clear opportunity to cross the road. You know, don't play chicken with cars. This next one is the ambulance. And this is actually not a rant. Because if you think about it, an ambulance is transporting somebody who needs medical care. This could be somebody who had a car accident, a uh, medical emergency, or a woman giving birth. So whenever I'm at home and I hear the loud siren of the ambulance, it doesn't really bother me because I, you know, I consider the fact that this is somebody who needs care. Next we have the potholes. Now granted, I know potholes exist all over the world, America included. 
But this is a video about Italy, and I'm not happy about how the roads are maintained here. Fantastic ride, isn't it? My last tip is something that I mentioned in the previous video, but it's worth mentioning again. If you're coming here and you just want to see uh, some of the major cities here, I would consider a car as a secondary form of, of transportation. Look into all their possible options before you even think of renting a car. The car is good if you're going to be here for a long time, and especially if you're going to see little towns. So we got two of them this week. This one pertains to, once again, parking. If you are trying to find a parking spot, uh, let's, let's say here in Rome, and you find nothing, what you have to do is you have to keep circling around the, uh, the general area until you do find something. So if, if you want to indicate to your friend that, that this is what you have to do, you can say, Facciamo il giro. Translated loosely, this means let's make another pass. Uh, this next one that you can use if you are irritated. So uh, I think this exists in every single language, but you know, suppose you're at a light, it turns green, the other person's not moving. You can simply say, Dai, muoviti. Come on, move it. If you have any Italian driving stories, leave me a comment below and I'd love to read them. If you enjoyed today's video, make sure you give me a thumbs up, that'd make me very happy. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe and also hit the bell next to the subscription button so you don't miss any of David's Doses of Italy. Grazie per l'attenzione, ci vediamo alla prossima. Ciao! Thank you very much for watching, I'll see you next time.